Murray Fields and Shane Bourne in the great Aussie Dope. <laughs> I've got a telegram here from the wife, Murray. Oh, what's it say? It says, look, not getting any better, come home at once. Oh, you're reading it wrong, son. Well, what do you mean, how should it read? Not getting any better, come home at once. <laughs> <laughs> you see? I heard one. You probably haven't heard this, Murray. This is about the vacuum cleaner salesman. He's out in the middle of the outback. Yeah. He's out there at a cattle station. Right. He's giving his spiel to the lady of the house, and she's not interested at all. He says, right. He said, last resort. He said, have you got a shovel? She said, certainly. So he took the shovel outside and he shoveled up about three cow pats. Oh. Huh? Cow pats. <laughs> right, brought them in, all over the shag pile, and she was shocked. He said, don't worry, madam. Do not worry. If this vacuum cleaner does not get up every last skerrick of the cow pat off your new shag, I will personally, <laughs> personally get down on my hands and knees and eat every last oh. skerrick. Oh. She said, look, she said, look, do you want sauce with that? Because we haven't got the electricity on you. <laughs> you see? There are our old mouths, we'll see this. <laughs> this bloke's taken his girl home, you see, and she's walking along and she broke the heel off her shoe. So she said, what'll I do? He said, I'll piggyback you. So he put her on his back and he walked around the corner. An Alsatian ran out and threw a bucket of water over <laughs> <laughs> Here's a beauty, but the guy, he was in the factory, right, in a big accident there, he cut all his fingers off, they were chopped off. So they ran into the doctors, and he said, what can you do? The doctor said, why didn't you bring your fingers? I could sew them back on. He said, I couldn't pick them up. <laughs> <laughs> a little kid, right, in school, puts up his hand, he says, excuse me, miss, but I can see your ankles. She said, you impertinent creature. Home you go and don't come back until tomorrow. Off he went. Ten minutes later, another little boy. Miss, 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 I can see your knees. She said, you rude, vulgar, little, home you go. Don't you come back until next week. Off he went. Twenty minutes later, she dropped the chalk. She bent down to pick it up. Little kid up the back got up and started walking out. She said, where do you think you're going? He said, well, from what I've just seen, my school days are over. <laughs> There's one here about a break-in at a TV shop and uh, coppers arrived and this drunk stared in there and they said, did you see what happened? And he said, well, this truck drove up, he said, and this big elephant got out of it, hurled a brick through the window and grabbed two TV sets and got back in the truck and shot through. <laughs> Copper said, what sort of an elephant was it? He said, well, it's, you see one elephant, you'll see them all. He said, no, no. He said, there's two types of elephant. There's an African elephant. They've got big ears. Indian elephant, they've got little ears. Now, what sort was it? He said, I don't know. It had a stocking over its head. <laughs> two drovers, they're in the pub, a couple of drovers, and they're arguing about who had the best dog. And the mind's the best. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. No matter how many times you say it, I'll say it more. Now, the guy said, well, look, the first guy said, I'll give you a bit of a demo here. He said, Barney, up here, the old cattle dog. He said, Barney, what I want you to do? He said, I want you to go three miles down the road, that big tree there, get the bus. He said, go down that road. He said, the third gate on the right, he said, go in there, there's 500 sheep and there is one sheep with a bit of a black patch. He said, I want you to get that sheep, bring it back on the bus, yeah. back to the pub here. So off he went, on the bus, there he was, hang on the strap, down on the bus. <laughs> it was a bit rough, rough, rough. He got down to the, uh, he got down to the wee ho and he, and, he, and, he and, he and he got the sheep, and he said, here, Long John Silver, and back they went. Long John, he brought Long John, it's because of the patch, I don't know why I said it, who cares? Back to, the, back to the pub. He said, yes, his mate said, very good. He said, but I'll tell you what, with my dog, Bluey, he said, I only have to give him one instruction, and he just makes the rest up. He said, he's marvellous. He said, Bluey, breakfast. Bluey shot off, got out of the ute, started it up. <laughs> down the road he went, you see, went down back to his own place there, in into the uh, the truck pen there, grabbed a bit of an egg out of the nest, just in his head like that, and it didn't go hack into the ute, so eh, 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 so there, didn't it? Because he had the egg in the teeth, you see, and so I hold it, oh, that's the monster, it's still there, going like that, saying, got a little walk into the, I slammed the door, I cleaned the hut, and hit the egg down, it's under his master's feet. <laughs> Under his what feet? Master's feet. Oh, oh. Right. <laughs> so, right, then he, he ducked out the back. This is silly. He ducked out the back, right, and he got the billy out of the back of the ute, right, went down to the river, put on, snapped on the Ansel gloves, scooped some water up. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
tail, you snap on the handcells when you're doing this, and you scoop the water up into the billy, brought the billy back in the teeth, right, made a little bit of a fire, rubbed two bones together, got a fire happening, got the billy happening there, went inside, picked out a thing in the safe of egg, and put the egg into the billy there, right, three minutes, didn't they do a look at his watch, because he wasn't watchdog. Ha, ha, ha. You see, laugh at him, and what happens, you see, and it, it, bo- and it boiled, boiled three minutes, brought that hair, it's really hot, 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 and, and brought it, and put it down at the feet of the drover. And the other guy said, that is absolutely fantastic. All of a sudden, the dog did a backflip and stood on his head. He said, that's marvellous. He said, but why is he standing on his head? He said, well, look, he's that smart. He knows I haven't got an egg cup. <laughs> Listen, I've, I've got a whopper here. <laughs> There's uh, this psychologist, you see, and he conducted this survey through a thousand people. And he said, uh, now, when you're having a bath, do you face toward the taps or away from the taps? Everybody said, towards the taps, except this one bloke. He said, no. He said, I face away from the taps. So the psychiatrist <laughs> rang him and he said, tell me, he said, you're one out of a thousand. He said, why do you face away from the taps? He said, we haven't got a plug. <laughs> <laughs> Inside the depths of the Australian Post, the staff came across this letter addressed to God, care of heaven. <laughs> well, they didn't know where to send it, you see. There was no postcode or anything. So they decided to open it, and inside they read this. Dear God, I am 86 years old, I'm a pensioner, and I'm running very short of money, and I desperately need a $100. Please, can you help me? The staff all looked at it, and then they went around, and they all chipped in, they raised 90 bucks, and they put it in the envelope and sent it back to her. Next week... The letter arrived, God, care of heaven. So he called all the staff in to read this letter of thanks and they opened it up said, Dear God, thank you very much for sending the $90 I desperately needed. Unfortunately, it wasn't the 100 but you know what robin mongrels they are in that Australian post. <laughs> quick one was about the guy yes this guy moved his house two meters forward right to get rid of the slack in the clothesline now i like it. <laughs> three guys pulled up by the police and the policeman said to him listen you look a bit suspicious what are your names and they're feeling a bit guilty had no idea so the guy looked around and he looked at an old department store over there and he thought i'll use that he said david jones he said to the next guy all right hardy ha 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 he said what's your name and he was caught. He looked around. He said, uh, uh, permanent uh, building society. <laughs> Got to, yeah, sure. He said to the last guy, all right, smart bottom. He said, all right. He said, now tell me, what's your name? The guy said, Ken. He said, thank goodness for that. He said, I've had enough of these smart Alex. No one respects the law anymore. Good one. Now, what's your surname, Ken? He said, Tucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> it's this fella driving on this... Uh country road you see and it's pretty mountainous and saw this sign 20k of winding road it's tore around the bend right behind this great big removalist truck that's parked there the driver's jumped out of the front of the truck run round it with a big lump of 4b2 and he's belting the sides of it like this back in the truck off he went again another k pulled up again out he's got again with a lump of 4b2 this went on for about 10k the bloke pulls he said hey just a minute he said, would you mind telling me what you're doing? He said, well, it's this way, son. He said, I've got a five-ton truck here, you see, and I've got six-ton of budgery guys on, so I've got to keep a ton of the mongrels flying. <laughs> <laughs> the gorilla is in the jungle, and he's a bit bored. He's sick of, you know, having to be tamber, cheater, and, you know, hyenas <laughs> laughing at him, all that sort of thing. So he thought, I might do something wild. I might do something left to centre here. So he comes across this lion having a drink of water at the local water hole. <laughs> and he thinks, well, I won't I? Yeah, I'll do it. So he sneaks up behind this lion, king of the jungle, right? Pulls his tail, kicks him in the bum, <laughs> pushes him in the water. It cleaned this up. <laughs> and takes off the lion. The lion is furious, humiliated. And he spots the gorilla. He thought, I'll get you, gorilla. And they're off, da da dum da dum chasing through the jungle, crashing through the villages, all that sort of thing. The gorilla's laughing. Ha, ha, ha. He's, he's running, ha, in gorilla language. Ha, ha, ha. He's the lion's after him. I'll get you, gorilla. All of a sudden, the lion started to catch up. The gorilla got a bit worried. What'll I do? So he ducked into a news agent. <laughs> and he grabbed the paper. Didn't bother to pay. Got the big one, the Australian. 
And he's sitting out on a park bench there, hiding behind the newspaper as the lion comes past. The lion screeches to a halt. And he says to the newspaper, he doesn't know who's behind it, he said, did you see a gorilla come past here? And the gorilla was hiding. He said, what, the one that pulled your tail, kicked you in the bum and pushed you in the water hole? He said, oh, it's not in the papers already, is it? <laughs> Anyhow, yeah, there's four mongrels down from the scrub, you see, and he's gone into this pub in Sydney, and he said, I'll have uh, a schooner and you, love, and uh, by the way, he said, if I was to give you $100, would you spend the night with me? Well, she was very taken back, and she thought about it for about a minute and a half, and she said, all right. So, that night, as soon as she knocked off, back to her flat, beautiful. Next day, he's come in, schooner and you, love. And he said, uh, I've got another hundred dollars. He said, what about the... She said, beauty, no worries. <laughs> this went on third night, same thing again. On the fourth night, no. he's come in. He said, I'll have a schooner and you, love. And she said, nothing else? And he said, no, no. He said, I've run out of money. She said, oh, it's a pity. Well, uh... she said, tell me. She said, you're a nice sort of a bloke. Where are you from? He said, oh, I'm from a little place called Kanamala up in the northwest, you see, just over the border. She said, that's funny, I've got a brother comes from there. He said, I know, he gave me $300 to give to you. <laughs> Here's one, gang, thrill seekers. Yeah. And it's about uh, the couple who were having their first child, see? But the husband was actually banned from the hospital by the wife because he was a bit nervy and she didn't want him around. So he rang up, he said, uh, how's it going? And the nurse said, you are the proud father of a bouncing baby. He said, is it a boy or a girl? I said, we don't know how to stop bouncing yet, you see. <laughs> As we continue on here, he rang, she said, it's not over yet. <laughs> Coming through the big glass, it's not over yet. Ring back in 20 minutes. So he rang back. The nurse said, guess what? Twins. He thought, whoo, you little beauty. Not over yet. Ring back in 10 minutes. He rang back in 10 minutes. Triplets. He thought this is... Th she said, it's not over yet. Ring back in 10 minutes. By this stage, the guy was going bonkers. He didn't know what he was doing. He was going burlesque. He picked up the phone and he's dialed the wrong number. He's got straight through to the Melbourne cricket ground. Good. He said, what's the score now? A voice said, well, they're all out and the last three were ducks, which is... <laughs> Two snakes in the jungle, one turned to the other. He said, uh, are we poisonous? The other one said, yes, we definitely are. The other one went, rats. He said, well, what's the problem? He said, I just bit my tongue. <laughs> <laughs> There's these four kids riding, uh, riding to school on the back of this horse, you see. Four of them lined up. Motorist pulled alongside and he's looked. And he said, hey, he said, you got room for one more up there? And the little smart aleck kid on the back lifted up the horse's tail. He said, yeah, you can jump in the boot if you like. <laughs> Here's a beauty. What have you got? It's about this guy that is shipwrecked on a Pacific island. First thing he knows, he wakes up, he's been carried by the Canucks. <laughs> Pause. To the village. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, the Canucks. Yeah. There he is in the village, yeah. you see? And they said, look, you're very lucky. Very lucky, because it happens to be the chief's birthday. Normally, it'll be all over for you. He said, we've devised, we have devised a three-pronged test for you. Right? First of all, there's three huts. In the first hut, there is a big... It's old. There is a big keg of rum. You must enter that hut, drink that rum. In the second hut, there is a lion with a toothache. You must extract the aforementioned tooth. And in the third hut, there is the most beautiful woman in the village who claims she has never been satisfied by a man. You must complete that task. So he goes into the first hut. He's in there for about ooh, 20, 25 minutes. He comes out. He is flying. He says, all right. He says, oh, well, hey, he's had a high ho. He said, where's the second hut? <laughs> into the second hut he goes. It's very quiet for about five to ten minutes. Then all of a sudden, mayhem. The, the roof's lifting off like in the cartoons. The walls are shaking. Straw is roaring and yelling. All of a sudden, the guy comes flying out about 50 yards down the track there. Boof, lands on the thing. He's cut. He's ripped. His clothes are falling off. He's bloodied. He picks himself up. He goes, right. OK, where's that lady with the toothache? <laughs> Is this poor mongrel, you see? He's, <laughs> he's trying to cross the Nullarbor in his old T-model Ford, you see. So he's belting along. He got about halfway across and he's run out of puff. The motor stopped and everything. This bloke in a white Porsche pulled up alongside of him and he said, uh, having a spot of bother, are we? The bloke said, yeah. He said, as a matter of fact, I've on a bit of a bet. I've got to get across the Nullarbor and my old T-model is. Broke down. 
The bloke said, well, look, he said, do you want to jump in? I'll give you a lift to the... He said, no, nah, no. He said, I've got to drive. That's the bet. He said, all right. He said, I'll give you a tow. Tied it onto the back of the Porsche. He said, right. He said, now, look, he said, if I'm going too fast, he said, toot your horn three times. Beauty. Off they went, 30, up to 40 k. Old bloke's there driving. He's never gone this fast in his life. Marvellous. The wind blowing through his hair and everything. All of a sudden, a Ferrari come past a Porsche. <laughs> How was that, Murray? How did he go past? <laughs> <laughs> That's not a Ferrari. With the two of them. With the two of them, was it? <laughs> Twin exhaust. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the fella in the Porsche... He's looked. He said, a Ferrari passing a pause. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Boom, down went the foot. 60, 70, 80, 100 K. The fellas at the back in the old T model go, meh, meh, meh. 120 K. There's the cop just outside this town. There's a copper waiting behind a signboard. Got onto the phone straight away to his sergeant. He said, Sarge, he said, bit of trouble here. He said, there's a Ferrari. Just went through here doing about 150k. He said, and then there was a Porsche, a white Porsche came through doing about 200k. The sergeant said, well, there's nothing unusual about that, but he's going too fast. He said, pinch him. He said, no, no. He said, you don't understand. That's not the hard part. He said, there's a fella behind him in an old T model tooting the both of them trying to get past. <laughs> This uh, country bloke, you see, he's come into this quiz session and he's going for the full lot. He's gone pretty well, you see, and he's going for the whole lot. So he's got three questions. And he said, right, he said, now the first question, you're playing for a lot of money here. He said, the first question is name two African animals. And he said, two lions. <laughs> he said, well, he said, that's fair enough, I suppose, two lions. Right, Judge, yeah, yeah, that, yeah that's OK, yes, yes. And he said, all right, the next question. He said, name uh, two days in the week that begin with T. And he said, today and tomorrow. <laughs> he said, well, fair enough, that's OK. He said, now, this is the final question for everything, all the money, the lot, the cars. He said, and you've got 30 seconds to answer it, but we're going to give you a clue. He said, now, he said, who was the famous French general? Fought 86 battles, won... 85 and lost one. Now you go into that room there and you'll find a clue. The fellow went in the room, all that's there is a fridge, you see, and he's opened the fridge and there's a bottle of Napoleon brandy. He said, right, came back in. He said, right, who was the French general? He said, General Electric. <laughs> <laughs> Good news, bad news. Ancient Egypt, we're on the big on the big ship there. There's 300 slaves, 900 slaves. There's 300 oars, three to an oar. You know they're down there and they've been. You know, yeah. They're down there. Oh, it's 900 oars, right? All the oars. <laughs> <laughs> they're oars. So the captain's come on. He's come on. He said, "Good news, bad news, slaves." I said, "Oh, not again." He said, first of all, the good news: the Queen of Egypt will be coming on board this afternoon." I said, "What's the bad news?" He said, "The bad news." Apparently, she wants to go water skiing. <laughs> Outback station, you see, a thousand miles from anywhere. And uh, the boss of these stations there and the flying doctors is there and you see the wife is expecting uh, a little baby. So they're waiting there. Finally, she started to uh, happen. The doctor said, quick, he said, have you turned the lights on? You got light? He said, no, he said, the generator's gone, it's finished. He said, well, we'll get kerosene for the lamps. He said, I haven't got any kerosene. He said, well, look, we need a light. He said, what do you got? He said, well, I've got my bike outside. It's got a dynamo on the front wheel if you pedal it. And he said, well, get out and chop the back wheel up and pedal like Ellen shine it through the window. I said, right. He's out. He's pedaling away. The doc said, quick, keep pedaling. He said, beauty. He said, it's coming. Oh, he said, you're the proud father of a little bouncing baby. Bloke said, what is it? He said, keep pedaling, keep pedaling. I can see another one. Out came another. He said, your father of twins. He said, keep pedalling. Out came another. He said, you got triplets. Keep pedalling. The bloke jumped straight off the bike. He said, what are you doing? He said, no way. He said, I think the bloody light's attracting them. <laughs> there we are in the army hospital. 
Right? Now, the colonel has walked in. There's three guys, three privates, in one ward, you see. And uh, so he said, the colonel's gone up to him. He said to the first guy, what's your problem, a soldier? He said, well, I've got a boil on the bottom. He said, oh, really? He said, uh, what are you doing for it? He said, well, uh, what they're doing for it, he said, is a little bit of iodine on a toothbrush and rub it on. And he said, well, um, he said, well, what's your main ambition in life, soldier? He said, well, to get out of here, to get well and fight for my country. <laughs> Good work, son. Came up to the next guy. He said, well, soldier, what's your problem? He said, I've got, uh, I've got marching rash. Bit of groin rub. <laughs> he said, he's tidied this one up. He said, so what, what are they doing for it? He said, bit of iodine on the toothbrush and they rub it on, you see? And he said, what's your main ambition in life? And uh, he said, well, of course, you know, to get out, get fit, fight for my country. Good work, son. Got to the last guy and he said, uh, what's your problem, soldier? What's your problem? And the guy said, laryngitis. He said, pardon? He said, I've got laryngitis. <laughs> he said, oh, and what are they doing for it? Iodine. <laughs> very, very important, this. A little bit of iodine on the toothbrush and they rub it on. He said, oh, marvellous. He said, what's your main ambition in life, soldier? He said, to get to the toothbrush before the other two. <laughs> Anyhow, there's uh, Hawke and Keating and uh, Howard, you see. They're up in Kakadu in the Northern Territory. And their VIP jet breaks down, you see. So they've got to get back to the Darwin. And they hop in this light plane. But they have to share it with an old priest and a young bloke, you see. So they've got about halfway back and the pilot has a heart attack. Let's the matter drop, you see. <laughs> there's only four parachutes. So Hawke said, well, he said, I'm having one. He said, because I'm the leader of the country. And Howard said, well, I'm the leader of the opposition, so I'm grabbing one. And Keating said, well, I happen to be the smartest man in Australia and I'm having one. And the old priest looked at the young bloke, he said, son, he said, my life is over now. He said, you've got yours before you, you take the last parachute. And the kid said, no, he said, it's all right, father. He said, the smartest man in Australia just jumped out with me ever <laughs> The guy gets on a plane, he looks at the woman beside him and he said, excuse me, he said, aren't you Yarn Event? She said, yes, matter of fact, I am. They got chatting, and Yana explained that she'd been doing a documentary on the sexuality rating of males of different nationalities. Right. And he was very interested. Yeah. Uh, very, very interested. Ostriches too? Yes, indeed. Right, OK. Yeah, a bit of a big rating. Yeah. He said, like... Um, he, said, <laughs> he said, now, tell me, he said, how did the Australian male go in this uh, rating? And she said, not too good, actually. Not too good at all. He said, well, well, who topped the ratings? And she said, well, funny thing, it was a cross between the American Indian and men of a Jewish background. He said, that's, that's incredible, that the American Indian and, and men of a Jewish background. He said, that is amazing. She said, by the way, what's your name? He said, Tonto Goldstein. <laughs> this is a funny gag. <laughs> There's a local cricket team, you see, and they're short of an opening batsman. So they decided to advertise in the paper, and after a couple of days, this horse turned up. And uh, coach said to the horse, he said, uh, what do you want? He said, well, I'm the opening bat. He said, don't be silly. He said, horses can't bat. He said, can't I? He said, just, just try me in one match. He said, all right, I'll try you. Try him in one match. Six sixes. <laughs> it's hard with my teeth. Off the first over. So... Next over, the other batsman, he's there and he decided to hit a single and let the horse bat out the rest, you see. So he's hit the single, tore off down, and there's the horse, hand on its, or wolf on its hip, <laughs> leaning on the bat. <laughs> the, other, the opening batsman, the other one, he's run out, you see. So he said to the horse, he said, listen, he said, why didn't you run? He said, turn it up. He said, if I could run, I'd be at bloody Flemington. <laughs> Two caterpillars, right, in the garden, talking, and a little butterfly. <laughs> that always amuses me when animals are talking, but they don't. <laughs> and a little butterfly flew across, you see, and the caterpillars are looking up at the butterfly. One turned to the other and said, no, nah. he said, you'll never get me up in one of those things. <laughs> so it's funny. Here's a longer one. This guy <laughs> driving down a country road. He's done about maybe 80k, looks out the window. There we are, over here, looks out the window. There is a three-legged chook right beside him, herbing along. Looked up at him, went, wink, wink, wink. 
I've got this. This is amazing. A three-legged joke going ITK. I'll plant the foot. Plant the foot. <laughs> Murray, Murray, I have told you. Will you take the cover? <laughs> <laughs> he planted the foot, he's doing 120, looks out the window. Bacat, bacat, wink, wink, the three legged chook. He's chasing this chook down the road, the chook hangs, hangs a right, he doesn't indicate, right up into this farmyard. So the guy follows him in the car, gets up there, see, the chook flies out, out past the farmhouse. The guy says to the farmer, he said, Excuse me, did you see a three legged chook? Wink, 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 came up there, <laughs> up the driveway, right out the back of the house. And the guy said, Don't worry, he said, You see, what it is, I breed them. You see, he said, What happens, you see, drumsticks, very popular. I thought, I'll get onto this, I'll market this idea. Everybody loves drumsticks, three legged chook. The guy said, That's fantastic, what do they taste like? He said, I don't know, we haven't been able to catch one yet. <laughs> I've got a beauty here. There was this. There was this septic tank, this yank, you see, and he's uh, inspecting cattle properties. He was about uh, oh, 30 stubbies west of Long Reach, you see, <laughs> and wandering through, and he said to the uh, Aussie bloke with him, he said, you know, back home where I come from in Texas, he said, I get up at dawn in the morning and I drive across my property and I don't reach the end of it until dark. And the Aussie said, yes, he said, I had a bloody car like that once. Hey, now, hey, hey, it's Saturday, go to heaven. I'm up there, Daryl's first in. Daryl Summers, go down the hallway, turn to your left, first room, room number 29. Up in heaven. Daryl walked into the room, and there in the corner was this old woman, 294 years of age, green hair, the skin of a goanna... <laughs> The nose of a bat, the teeth of a rat. Oh, dear. And the eyes Jackie of... got there first. <laughs> <laughs> Big O, you oh, guilty. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, right, over the PA, <laughs> over the PA came this. Daryl Summers, for all your sins, take your partner for eternity. Next, Wilbur Wilde. Mr. Wilde, down there, go to the right. Room 64. Walked in, there was this woman, she was so big. She was like, he couldn't really see where she started and finished. She was huge. She was 118 stone, bigger than Channel 9, with a very small head and one tooth. <laughs> Over the PA. Bulba Wild. <laughs> for all your sins, meet your partner for eternity. I just wanted to know how he's going to clean this up. <laughs> Next, would you believe, was Redmond Simon. Oh, Red, they said, yes, we've been, waiting <laughs> we've, been, we've been waiting for you straight ahead, room 13. Wink, wink. Wow. <laughs> I thought walked in the door, walked in the door, there, laying on a queen-size bed with satin sheets, rubbing oil on her voluptuous body, <laughs> was none other than Bo Derrick. <laughs> he thought, you little beauty, Bo Derrick. <laughs> and over the PA, <laughs> over the PA came... Bo Derek for all your sins. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got one here. Have I got one here? <laughs> this fella here. And it's pouring rain and you wouldn't want to know the car broke down. So he's got out and he's lifted the bonnet, you see, because he had a rough idea that's where the motor was. And he's peering into it, willing it to go. And he looked round and saw this black horse in the paddock. He said, Beauty, I'll get that horse, ride it into town and bring a mechanic out. So he got the horse, put his tie around its neck, he's dragging it past the front of the car. The horse put its head straight under the bonnet and said, Your car barretta's bugging. <laughs> <laughs> so the bloke got into the car, he fixed the carby and tried it. Away it went like a beauty. Got into the next town, he went up to the bar and he said, Give us a triple rum, will you, mate? Farmer said, you look a bit upset, and he told him what happened. He said, oh, you can thank your lucky stars, mate. He said, he said, tell me, he said, where you broke down? He said, uh, would there be a big black horse in the paddock? The fella said, yeah. <laughs> he said, well, George, you're lucky, mate. He said, there's usually a white horse in there, and he knows bugger all of it. <laughs> It's like the guy that walked into the pub up the top end in Darwin, <laughs> having a few quiet ones, and one of the locals walked in, walked up to the barman, and he said, uh, I'll, have a, I'll have a beer, thanks, donkey. And the guy beside him thought, hang on. 
And he said, a packet of nuts as well, thanks, donkey. He said, got any change for the phone, donkey? Nicked off, he said, see you later, donkey. Now, the guy turned to the barman, he said, look, I've never, I've never seen anything like this in my life. He said, that's dreadful. He said, that guy walked in, he said, I'll have a beer, donkey, at the nuts, he called you donkey, the change for the phone, donkey. And the barman said, oh, he, all, he, all, he always calls me that. <laughs> <laughs> Warwick Capper, right, was walking through King's Cross. I'll walk over here like Warwick Capper, right? You see, he was walking through King's Cross like this. Well, he wasn't really. That's a lie. He was walking through King's Cross and he saw this great big apartment building on fire. You see, and there was a lady. <laughs> there was a lady on the, on the 15th floor, right, holding a baby. And Warwick said, throw the baby down. I've never dropped a mark in my life. She said, oh, no, I couldn't do that. Little baby, couldn't do that. He said, throw the baby down. I've never dropped a mark in my life. She said, oh, no, I couldn't. I'm 15 pulls up the spot. I've got the baby. He said, throw the baby. <laughs> so eventually, she had no choice. Threw the baby out the window. Warwick, Warwick went up and took a scarima. <laughs> and then played on. <laughs> Phone rings in the maternity hospital, you see, and the uh, nurse picked it up. There's this bloke on the other end. He said, quick. He said, send an ambulance straight away. He said, the wife's having the baby. For God's sake, Harry. The nurse said, now, calm down, calm down. She said, uh, is this a first child? And he said, no, no, this is her husband speaking. <laughs> Three guys arrived in heaven. And they're talking about what happened. First guy said, well, it was my fault. He said, I became insanely jealous. I suspected my wife of uh, fooling around with another guy. So what happened? I went to work and I thought I'll double back because that's when it was happening. I burst in. I said, where is he? Where is he? Couldn't see anyone. Saw the window was open. Looked out the window, looked down, and there was a guy running along towards his car, pulling his pants up. He said, I went mad. I went burlesque. He said, I grabbed the first thing that was near. It, was, it happened to be the fridge. Picked up the fridge in a fit of rage and threw it out the window. He said, I had a heart attack and died. <laughs> the other guy said, well, that's, that's funny. He said, Phew. He said, it's funny you should mention that. He said, because I was, I was running late for work. He said, you see, and I was running along and I had the toaster and I was pulling up my front. And he said, all of a sudden, kaboom! <laughs> this big fridge hit me on the head. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they said to the third guy, I said, uh, what about you? And he said, well, look, you're not going to believe this. He said, I was hiding in this fridge. <laughs> <laughs> you're this is that's a bit of a yarn. Yeah. It's about this guy staggering home after a bit of a uh, bicentennial party. You know, those parties, yes. sort of buy parties there. And he's, he's had a few, and he's staggering home there, and he can, he's a bit peckish, and he comes across this little duck. So and he thinks, oh, I could, I could have this duck. So he whacks the duck over the head. Oh. He plucks the duck. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> plucks the duck, right? He's building a fire. He's going to cook the duck. Just then a couple of policemen come over, and he thinks, woo, woo, woo. <laughs> he would, wouldn't what he? Does he, think? he thinks, woo, woo, woo. <laughs> Sorry, no, woo, 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 woo. <laughs> what he does, he grabs the duck, he throws it into a nearby pond. Right, of course, the duck comes to, whack, 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 all that sort of stuff that ducks do. Yes, pardon me. The duck. <laughs> Peter the Visser, stop eating those curries. <laughs> the policeman said, now look, you're obviously going to eat this duck. All the evidence is there the fire, the pluck duck, and this pile of feathers. He said, explain yourself. And the guy said, well, look, he said, I was sitting here. He said, and me and the duck were talking. He said, the duck said, I wouldn't mind going for a swim. And I said, well, look, it's a, it's a bit nippy. Uh, I'll, I'll build a fire. And he said, I'll tell you what, I'll even mind your clothes for you. And so, That's a yarny sort of good news, bad news. The patient's in the doctor's. The doctor says, I've got some good news, bad news. He said, hit me with the good news first. The doctor said, you've got 24 hours to live. He said, what's the bad news? And the doctor said, I should have told you yesterday. <laughs> about this bloke that joins this posh country club, you see. And he, beautiful swimming pool there, so he's dived in. Came out the side, straight into the bar, had a few beers. Back into the pool again. Back to the bar, had a few more beers. This happened about ten times. Finally, the manager of the club came up and he said, I'm sorry, sir, you're expelled. He said, what for? He said, for weeing in the pool. He said, I... <laughs> Turn it up. He said, the, the thing's chlorinated and everything, and besides, there's a heap of kids in there, and they always do it, and a heap of old people, and they can't help it. <laughs> and he said, why should I get expelled for, for weeing in the pool? He said, well, he said, you probably do it yourself anyway. He said, well, I may have, he said, but not from the high diving tower. <laughs>
I've got a quick one about the guy who'd had enough of life in the 80s, go, 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 fast, all that stuff, so he thought, I'm going to become a monk. I'm going to go up to Blue Mountains and I'm going to join a monastery and I'm going to monk it up like no one has ever monked in the history of monastery. <laughs> <laughs> He's gone up there, they've welcomed, welcome, a cordial welcome. They took him to the head monk. The head monk said, welcome. He said, I should point out that it's a silent order up here and you are only allowed to say two words every 12 months. You see? You come before me, you kneel and you say the two words. Off he went. Twelve months of praying, sweeping, generally, you know, monking it up. <laughs> Got back to the head monk, twelve months, knelt, he knelt down, he looked up and he said, food, bad. <laughs> <laughs> Off he went. Twelve months, sweep, sweep, pray, pray, time flies when you're monking it up. <laughs> Got back to the head monk, knelt down, bed, hard. <laughs> Time flew. Twelve months was up. He was there after a year. Knelt down in front of the head monk. He said, I quit. <laughs> head monk said, I'm not surprised. You've done nothing but bits since you've been here. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful stuff. We're on a roll. The yeah. lion, a big lion walking through the jungle. Great big lion. And he comes across this gazelle. He said, hey, gazelle flitches. <laughs> Who's the king of the jungle? And the oh, he said, oh, you are sir. Yes, definitely sir, sir. You are sir, your majesty, yes. <laughs> he said, good, keep your selling. Came across, came across this big giraffe. He said, hey, Gulliver! <laughs> he said, who's the king round here? <laughs> giraffe said, oh, you are sir, 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 sir. You are definitely, yes, your majesty, fawn, fawn. Sorry, a bit of show, but spit. Fawn, fawn. <laughs> <laughs> he thought it was a giraffe. He said, yeah, keep being tall. Off he went, came across, came across this huge bull elephant. He said, hey! Scratch marks! <laughs> he said, hey, he said, who's the king of this joint? <laughs> the elephant picked him up in his trunk, threw him 50 feet in the air, he came down, kicked him on the back leg, bounced him on his head, boom, boom, caught him on the tusk, spun him around for five minutes, picked him up with the trunk, a hundred yards, bang into a palm tree. <laughs> Lion picked himself up, he said, okay, okay, no need to do your block just because you don't know the answer. <laughs> You see, there was this poor farmer bloke, you see, and uh, he's gone to the doctor. He said, Doc, he said, I'm in awful trouble at home. He said, uh, on the tractor all day, I get home and have me dinner, straight to bed, can't even give the wife a smouse, no urge whatsoever. The doc said, that's dreadful. He said, he said, as a matter of fact, he said, the only time I do get an urge is when I'm in the bottom paddock sitting on the tractor while it's going, you see. <laughs> the doc said, well, look, he said... Next time you're down there, he said, take a double barrel shotgun with you. When you feel the urge coming on, you fire both barrels, you see, and get the missus to run down shedding clothes as she comes, you see. <laughs> <laughs> Saw him about a month later. He said, how did you go? He said, I don't know, I haven't seen her since the duck opening. <laughs> uh, there's about two guys that uh, went to a fancy dress party as a pantomime cow. Oh, right, you know, like the big Excuse me, Maurice. Uh, like one up the front, one up the front. <laughs> and they thought, uh, they thought, we're going home here. We'll take a shortcut through the paddock, you see. So they're going through the paddock, bit of a sort of, bit of a canter there. And the guy at the back all of a sudden taps the guy on the front. He taps him on the bum. He said, he said, Bernie, he said, you'll never guess what. He said, there's a great big bull charging towards us. What are we going to do? And the guy at the front said, well, look, he said, I'm going to chew grass. <laughs> you'd, you'd better brace yourself. <laughs> These two golfers, they hadn't played for years and the pro found them in the bar and he said, listen, you two blokes used to play every week, religiously. And he said, well, he said, I can't play anymore, the first fella said. He said, because the eyesight's gone, you see. He said, I can still hit a ball, but I don't know where it finishes. And the other bloke said, well, I'm a bit in the same boat. He said, I can see the ball all right, see it perfectly, eyes like an eagle. He said, but I can't keep score, you see, the memory's going. So the pro said, look, why don't you play together? Now, look, you keep the score, the one with the bad eyesight. He said, and you, you can see where his ball finishes. He said, beauty. So they went out together. First bloke teed off. He said, God, that felt good. He said, did you see where it landed? Where is it? And he said, it's a beautiful shot. He said, straight up, ah, oh, still going. Oh, fantastic. He said, right, it's your go. He went, whack, missed the ball. Other bloke said, that's one. Bang, he missed it to get it two. Boom, he's hit it. He said, you're hitting for three. He said, where's my ball again? He said, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> what about the guy that went to the hairdressers? Totally bald, Murray. Totally bald. <laughs> totally bald. <laughs> no, 
No, he just stood tall for your hair. <laughs> no, he was totally bald. I've been caught in a hair raid. <laughs> Totally bought apart from three hairs, right? So he sat in the chair, and the barber said, well, how would you like it parted? Um, and he said, well, look, no, he said, hang it all, part it to the left. So he went to part it to the left, a hair came out. He said, I'm dreadful, I'm sorry. And the guy said, well, don't worry. He said, just part it down the middle. So he went to part it down the middle, another one came out. He said, I'm, th- I said, I'm terrible. The guy said, don't worry, just leave it messy. <laughs> Here's a guy... He's driving down the highway from Sydney to Melbourne. His truck breaks down. He's a truckie, right? He flags down a fellow truck driver. He said, I've got big problems. I've got 23 penguins on board. (laughs) I've got to get them to the zoo. Can you help me out? It's a bit hot. They're all in there, penguining it up. (laughs) He said, I need to get... Can you help me? Here's $200. The guy said, sure. Off he went. Now, he fixed the truck up about an hour later. He thought, I'll go and check on this. So he headed towards the Melbourne Zoo, and about a mile before he got to the zoo, there is this truck driver walking along the street with the 23 penguins, laughing and chatting. <laughs> you know, as they do. <laughs> he said, Oi! He stopped the truck. He said, I thought I told you to take the penguins to the zoo. And the guy said, I did. We had such a good time. Now I'm taking them to the pictures. <laughs> It's there you tell them. <laughs> this A.B. Rosenfield, you see, he's gone to apply for our housing commission flat. Got there and uh, the bloke said, uh, name, he said, Rosenfield. He said, you're Jewish? He said, yes, of course. He said, I'm sorry, I can't help you. So he's gone away, he's rung his best mate, Honan. He said, Hon, <laughs> told him what happened. Honan said, well, look, he said, when you go back, he said, tell him you're Catholic. He said, they'll never know the difference. So he's gone back, he said, uh, Rosenfield, I want to apply for a flat. He said, name? He said, A.B., A.B. Rosenfield. He said, are you Jewish? He said, no, I'm Catholic, Catholic, Hussey, Catholic. He said, all right. He said, would you mind answering a couple of questions? He said, uh, first, he said, uh, who was the son of uh, God? He said, Jesus. He said, uh, who were his parents? He said, Mary and Joseph. He said, where was he born? He said, a stable in Bethlehem. He said, well, why was he born in a stable in Bethlehem? He said, because he was Jewish and they couldn't get a bloody housing commission <laughs> flat. <laughs> you like this one. What it is is uh, this guy went on holidays off to Bali for a couple of weeks, you see, and he had this cat, Fluffy. So he got his brother-in-law to look after Fluffy, yeah. right? So he's in Bali, he rings back, right, and he says, look, uh, I wonder how Fluffy's going. And his brother-in-law said, well, I'm afraid Fluffy's dead. And the guy said, well, couldn't you? You could have, like, uh, you know, maybe softened the blow and said, well, you know, maybe Fluffy was up on the, the roof playing and, and he fell off, and uh, but he landed on some soft leaves there and uh, we picked him up, took him to the vet, and uh, he, he, he passed away gently. Could have done that. He said, by the way, how's Mum? He said, well, she was up on the roof playing. <laughs> I've got one. Have you? Have I got one? Can we share it with you? <laughs> Please. Good. You see, there's this... Uh, there's a yank... And there's an Aussie and there's an Irishman. I'm sorry, this American. And an Australian and an Irish chappy. And they're up before the firing squad, you see. So the Yank, they had a minute, and he said, now listen, he said, we've got to create a diversion. He said, and when they turn, he said, we've got to scoot over that hill and go like hell, you see. So the Yank said, I'll go first and show you what to do. So he's got up there, they've all, ready, eh? And he said, Tornado! All spun round and he's off over the hill, gone. Ozzy said, I'll go next. So he's got up. He said, I am. He said, Flash flood! <laughs> off he's gone over the hill when they all turned round, you see. And the Irishman got up there. And he said, There's a piece of cake. He said, Fire! <laughs> <laughs> now, this is a nice little story. David Jones, right, menswear department. There's a lady who's been working on the underwear section for 15 years. She knows all about undies. She, she does. All the different styles, the big, the older style there with the inbuilt air conditioning. <laughs> the new style that ride right up the back and you think you're on world championship wrestling. All the different... 
all the different styles. Now, a guy's walked in, in the morning, all that sort of thing. He said, give me seven pairs of undies. She said, seven pairs? That's amazing. We usually sell one, two, three, not seven. He said, ah. He said, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. She said, fabulous. Another guy walked in, nine pairs of underpants, thank you. She said, nine pairs? What an amazing coincidence. Guy's just put the seven. He said, ah. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and a change for Friday and Saturday when I go out going like that to the dance. <laughs> <laughs> How did he go out? Well, it's underwater with the worm and the whiskey. Yeah, right. <laughs> Guy walks in. He says, I'll have 12 pairs of underpants. She said, what a day this is. 12 pairs, what a super hygienic man you must be. He said, yeah, yeah. He said, January, February. <laughs> Here's one about King Kong Bundy. The, the big wrestler, right? Yeah. And he's decided to go on a bit of a vegetarian diet. So he pops down to the local supermarket, and he's gone into the, the, to the, uh, the fruit and veggie section, had a bit of trouble, you can imagine, getting through the turnstile, because he had all the gear on, those great big, you know, those great big wrestling ones that ride right up there. And he's in the supermarket, he's gone up to this young kid there at fruit and veggies, and he said, uh, I want half a lettuce. And the kid said, uh, I'm sorry, he said, we only sell whole lettuces. He said, I want half a lettuce. <laughs> He said, well, we can't, well, look, you can get 99 cents. You can get a nice, juicy, with all the lettuce. He said, give me half a lettuce. He said, cut the lettuce in half and give me half. And the kid said, we can't. Like, he said, I want to have a lettuce. <laughs> and the kid said, well, look, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll go and need a pig. <laughs> I'll do it again. Have a lettuce. <laughs> like Barney Rubble. He said, not in a bag soon, Alice. You'll take that trip. <laughs> So he's gone out, he's gone out the back, the kid gone out, and he said to the manager, there's this great big, in, the, in all the, there's a big, a big, a daggiest guy I've ever seen, ugly, uh, he's so ugly, you look up the word in the dictionary, you'll find his photo, he's got the, uh, it, and he's got a big head, and he's bald, and he's a horrible, and he wants half a lettuce. He turned around, there was King Kong Bundy standing behind him. Quick as a flash, he said, this kind gentleman wants to buy the other half. <laughs> This fella's gone into a pet shop, you see. He wanted to get his son a nice little pet. So the salesman talked him into getting one of these tortoises, you see, or tortoise. <laughs> tort. One of them, little round things. So he's gone home, tortoise, give it to the kid. The kid's wrapped in it. He said, oh, thanks, Dad. He's taken it outside to play with it. Next morning, the fella had a look at the tortoise, and here it is walking across the kitchen floor like this. Oh, oh. oh. Ah! Oh! <laughs> he picked it up, looked at it, took it back to pet shop. He said, this tortoise is pretty crook. He said, uh, you've sold me a dud. Blake said, all right. He said, I'll give you another one. So he gave him another tortoise. Home, he's gone. Kid said, beauty, dad, out the backyard at a game with it. Next day, the tortoise said, oh, oh, I couldn't walk. Poor little thing. Took it back and he's really annoyed. He said, now listen, you've sold me two dud tortoises or tortoise. <laughs> he said, now, I want to do this. Blake said, look, he said, I've got one left. He said, here. And the little kid's there. He said, they are, son. He said, oh, gee, thanks. Vroom, 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 vroom. Now, well, it's not this big, oh, the drunk and the duck, right? And they're walking along, and the drunk says, this is quacky, wacky. He said, do you want to go and see a movie, Wooby? And the duck went, whack, whack. And he said, I'll take that as a yes. So they went in, into the cinema, went up to the box office, and said, can I go and see a movie, me and the duck? And the guy said, you can't bring the duck in here, it's against health regulations. So off he went. The drunk, you see, ducked around the back, he got the duck up the jumper. And he came in, says, can I have to sick of one? The duck's got his feet, you can see the, the web feet coming out there, and now, whack, whack, whack. And the guy said, you can't come in here, you've got your duck up the jumper. You've stuck your, your duck up the, the, the jumper. <laughs> He said, get out. So the drunk went round the back. Last resort, he ran it down the backs. What, what could you do? Down the strides, you see? Down the strides it went. And he said, one thanks. So the guy let him in. He's sitting next to two older ladies sitting there. And they're watching the movie. And all of a sudden, the duck's in there. And then they just got his head just over the top. A gasp of air, you see? And the, the old lady next to happened to spot it. She, oh, she said, Madge, Madge, have a look down there, have a look down there. <laughs> oh, Madge said, look, we're 80 years of age, seen one, you've seen them all. She said, yeah, I know, I know, but this one's eating the chips. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently this, this bloke's walked up to his local priest and he said, uh, Father, he said, I think I'm going to get kicked out of the church. And the priest said, what for? He said, we don't kick people out, we, your sins are forgiven. He said, what happened? He said, well, he said, the wife... Said she was bending over the deep freeze, you see. 
getting a check in. And, well, I, I just couldn't stand it. He said, I, I had to grab her and I threw her on the floor and we made hard, passionate love. And he said, I know I'm going to get thrown out. And the priest said, now, look, he said, that's quite all right. He said, in the confines of marriage, that's perfectly OK. You won't be thrown out. He said, are you sure? He said, no, certainly not, my son. Like that, that's funny. He said, they threw us out of Woolworths. <laughs> Here's one about the doctor doing the rounds in the hospital. And he comes to this private ward, you see, and he gets down to the keyhole. <laughs> and he says, uh, Mr. Johnson, are you there, Mr. Johnson? <laughs> Mr. Johnson? <laughs> Mr. Johnson, are you there? Yeah, Mr. Johnson. Get down. He says, it's more uncomfortable there. <laughs> Mr. Johnson's looking, yes, he said, yes. Oh, he, he said, over here at the keyhole. And they're down to the keyhole again. He said, Mr. Johnson, the tests have come through. And Mr. Johnson, oh, really? He said, uh, <laughs> well, how'd they go? He said, uh, well, not too good. He said, as a matter of fact, he said, you've got E-D-K-T-M. He said, E-D-K-T-M. He said, what's that? He said, every disease known to man. <laughs> he said, you've got all the itises, you've got sinusitis, you've got tenosin, you've got hepatitis, you've got everything. Not too good. And Mr. Johnson, so he said, well, what, uh, you know, look at the keyhole. <laughs> he said, well, what, uh, uh, you know, can you do anything? He said, well, we're going to put you on a very special diet. He said, well, what, uh, what, what's the diet? He said, well, it, it's pancakes and pizzas. <laughs> He said, pancakes and, and pizzas. He said, is, is that going to fix me up? He said, no, but it's the only thing we can fit under the door. <laughs> These two old schoolmates, you see, and they're growing up and they're walking down the street and he happens to spot him. And he said, Harry, how are you, mate? He said, I haven't seen you since school days. He said, tell me, how are you and, and what are you doing? How's the family? He said, uh, well, actually, he said, the name's Harold and... Uh, I'm going frightfully well, and uh, I do have a family, and we've taken up a little hobby. He said, I play uh, the violin, but my wife plays uh, the flute, and uh, have two beautiful children. One plays the organ, and the other one plays the cello. You must come round some night, and uh, we'll give you a little bit of chamber music. The other bloke said, oh, he said, that's lovely. <laughs> and uh, Harold said, uh, and tell me, he said, uh, what have you been doing with yourself? He said, oh, I'm going well. He said, I've uh, got a bit of a family. We could hobby too, you know. He said, uh, I've taken up judo and the wife's taken up karate. Got two kids. One's a boxer and the other one does a bit of wrestling. Must come round one night and we'll give you a bloody good item. <laughs> Speaking about American tourists, so there's this guy up in Queensland. He's saying, hey, goddamn, I love your country here. I mean, this is a really, like, it's a, it's a pretty country. It's Queen. He said, you know, but back home, we put the first man on the moon. And the guy, it was in Queensland, actually. He said, weak, weak. He said, we have plans in Queensland to put the first man on the sun. <laughs> The guy said, hey, come off the grass here, you're goddamn crazy. I mean, you get within, like, uh, what are we talking here, two million miles of the sun, you're going to be burnt to a cinder. He said, ah, oh, we thought of that. We're sending him at night. He said. <laughs> it's a little kid sitting in the gutter playing with this bottle, you see. And the local priest walked past, and he said, uh, what are you doing there, sonny? He said, I'm playing with this bottle. He said, what's in the bottle? He said, sulfuric acid. <laughs> the priest said, my God. He said, he said you realise that's very dangerous. He said, look, he said, I'll swap you for this bottle of holy water. And the kid said, no way. The father said, look, he said, it's great. He said, I rubbed some on a lady's tummy the other day and she passed a beautiful little baby. The kid said, that's nothing. I rubbed some on me dog's behind and he passed a Mercedes. <laughs> <laughs> It's like the guy, like the guy that jumped... I'll, I'll tell you about this. Yeah. This guy who actually went parachuting. The very first time, he's up there, he's in the plane. The instructor said, now look, when you jump out, don't worry about the one, two, three, through to ten. He said, you'll get confused, you'll panic. He said, all you've got to do, jump out, yell, Geronimo! And pull the cord. Easy, you see. Time cut. And pushed him out. Right, they're flying along. Two minutes later, there was a tap on the side of the plane. Look out, there's the guy. What was the bloody name of that Indian again? <laughs> <laughs> this little fe fellow, mm -hmm. he, uh, <laughs> no, he's not a mongrel. <laughs> <laughs> this little fellow, he lived in this riverland town, you see, and there's a hell of a flood. So he's, way, he's very God-fearing, this man, and he said, no, he said, God will save me. A rowing boat come along when the water was up to his doorstep. They said, well, 
you better come with us. He said, no, no. He said, God is going to save me. I'm quite sure of that. Next time he's up on the roof, the rowan boat come back. And they said, we better pick you. He said, no, no. He said, God will save me. The water's up to here. <laughs> Standing on tippy toe on top of the roof. Like that. <laughs> True. And this helicopter come up. He said, get away. He said, God will save me. God will save me. And he's gone under and died. <laughs> he's gone up, to, gone up to heaven, you see. And he saw St Peter. He said, hey. He said, what's bloody going on? He said, no. <laughs> God was going to be saving me. He said, uh, and he didn't. He said, Peter said, well, what do you expect? He said, we sent two rowing boats and helicopter for you. <laughs> Now, the scene is where they're at Puckapunyal, on the, on yeah. Puck, Puckapunyal, on the parade ground, you see, and the sergeant major's out there. He said, Company! Tension! <laughs> <laughs> he said, Private Johnson, bad news, your father's dead! Oh, no. Now, th listen to this. Listen to this. <laughs> the colonel said, uh, Sir Major, can I have a quick word? Into the office, please. He said, now, Sir Major, you're doing a, you're doing a, a really spiffing job. He said, here, it's top notch, top hole. <laughs> he said, but, uh, he said, I think when you break news like that of a personal nature to the men, I think it'd be much better if it was possibly delivered in a more diplomatic, shall we say, tactful sort of way. You know what I'm talking about, Sir Major? He said, oh, now, uh, uh, some very bad news has come through. Poor old Private Johnson, his mother, has now passed away. Now, I want you to break the news and use a little bit of that, 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 that diplomacy that we've been talking about. He said, Sir! Leave it to me, Sir! Out in the parade ground. Company! Half a letter! <laughs> Ten shot! <laughs> he said, Right! <laughs> <laughs> He said, all those with at least one parent still living? <laughs> Form a line over there. Johnson, where do you think you're going? <laughs>